In chapter 2, we discuss the sun's apparent position in the sky related to the latitude. This factor is the most critical temperature control and is directly related to seasonality. Other factors, such as elevation, cloud cover, uh, also land water heat indifference, also results in Earth's temperature patterns. So again, latitude is the most single important one, altitude and elevation, land water heat indifference, and cloud cover. So let's talk the first one, latitude. So latitude refers to the distance of a location of a place on the Earth's surface from the equator, while altitude describes how high a place is located above the sea level, latitude and altitude are two primary factors known affecting temperature in the Earth's surface because of nickel heating of temperature. So look at the example you have here. You have four cities. The first one, Boro, Alaska, New Orleans, Salvador, Brazil, Montreal. Each one has different latitude. Look at the characteristic you have between uh, the temperature, especially the temperature range. Let me show in this moment here, you can see what's going on in this point. All right. So when you have a city, for example, like Salvador, uh, the characteristic you have is the temperature you be. Oh. <coughs> Let's talk about latitude. For example, the city of Salvador, Bahia, is very close to the equator. So one characteristic you have in this region you see the temperature, the green line, is a flat line around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's no much change because you know when you talk about uh, tropical regions, there is no um, much change in temperature year round. So the temperature is pretty much the same. So if you go a little farther, New Orleans, you start to see the difference between summer and uh, the winter and summer that called the temperature range. So increase, if you go a little further north, Montreal, Canada, you see how summer goes, even maybe 70 degrees, but I start to notice is several months in the year, the temperature on average are below the freezing point. If you go to Bora, Alaska, so another thing you notice is the temperature range increase. So risk is the high altitude, you have low temperature average and high temperature range. In the low latitude, high average and low temperature range. That's another characteristic you have between them. Let's revise again. So we'll go farther away from the equator, the temperature, the average decrease, but increase the temperature range. That means the difference between summer and winter. Another one is the altitude. For every 100 meters rise in altitude, temperature decreases by about 1 degree Celsius. Regions in the high altitude, such as a mountain place, experience low temperatures. So the Earth's surface absorbs heat energy from the sun, and when it's warm up, the heat diffuses in the atmosphere, warming up, and turn transfers some of this heat to the upper layers of the atmosphere. Therefore, the layers of the atmosphere close to the Earth's surface receive the most heat compared to the high altitude areas. So in this example here, <coughs> you compare two cities, La Paz and Santa Cruz, and one notices temperature changes. So temperature decrease of increasing altitude, air density decrease, that's another example we mentioned, and thin air has a low ability to absorb, so it ends up, even though temperature becomes much in life. So the another one is the cloud cover. Clouds also have a major role in reflecting some of the sun's short wavelength, remember visible light, radiation, back to the space. The proportion of incidental radiation reflected by a substance called albedo, remember that term albedo? The albedo is low thick clouds such as stratocumulus is about 90%. The albedo of high thin clouds such as cirrus may be low as a 10%. So different clouds with different altitudes and different characteristics has different albedo. 
The albedo could vary with the wavelength of the radiation, but for clouds it does not, as evidenced by the fact that they are white under white light. At sunrise and sunset, incident light is red, orange or yellow, and the clouds reflect the light without modification. The albedo of clouds are for infraradiation is like the same for visible light. There are two sides, top and bottom, to clouds that may be involved in the reflection of radiation. The clouds also share a hole with the greenhouse gases and also share a hole of the ice and snow fields in high latitudes. So the hole of the clouds is reflecting the thermal, infrared, radiation back to the Earth's surface has generally been neglected. Altogether, water in the three forms of water liquid drops and particles of ice in the overwhelmingly dominant substance in the Earth's climate. So the effects of cloud cover on temperature is familiar experience. So without a cloud cover in the area, the temperature drops sharply at night, whereas with clouds the temperature drop is noticeably more moderate. On the other hand, in the daytime, in the summer, with no clouds, the temperature goes much higher than it does when there is a cloud cover. So, cl clouds play a different role in the day and at night. So again, during the day, the cloud reflects most of the solar energy, make the day cooler. But at night, the clouds work as a blanket, holding or absorbing Earth energy and retain and send back this uh, energy to the Earth, so keeps the nights much warmer. So another one is the land-water heating difference. So the continents heat up faster than the oceans, and they cool down faster too. You can see it's quite clear uh, in some elements you have. So why that? So evaporation is higher over water surface, you have transparency, high specific heat and movement. So let's see how then in this example here. The specific heat capacity means water has a higher heat capacity than land. So it takes more heat to rise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree than it does to rise the temperature of land. One calorie of solar energy any type of energy really, will warm one gram of water by one degree Celsius, while the same calorie would rise the temperature for one gram the granite by more than five degrees Celsius. So that's how you see the difference, that's you, you feel like if you walk, for example, in the grass or in the concrete or asphalt, you see the difference. Another one is transparency. The heat absorbed by the oceans is is spread out over a great volume because the oceans are transparent, to some degree. Since light can penetrate the surface of the water, the heat from the sun is dispersed over a great depth. Another one is evaporation. So the oceans lose a lot of heat from evaporation in the evaporative heat loss experiment. Why there is some evaporation from wet soils and transpiration by plants, the land, land does not have anywhere near as much available moisture to cool it down. Remember between the difference latent heat and sensible heat? So what happens is water has high latent heat, so most of the energy is used to evaporate water. Land has less water, most of the energy will be used in the sensible heat. So, finally, currents. Not only the ocean absorb heat over a greater depth, but they also move that energy around with their currents. The solar energy absorbed at the equator gets transported towards the poles, while the colder polar water gets transported to the other way. Currents help average out ocean temperature and also is a climate control. 